Uh, up until uh, late 19th century, well, late 19th, early 20th century, that's when uh, physicists discovered one wave that does not appear to have a medium. There's one wave that you know of so far that um, doesn't require a medium to travel. It can travel through a vacuum. Light, yeah, electromagnetic wave. So, so that's the problem with the speed of light. So, I mean, so you know what light is? It's an uh, um, electromagnetic wave. And um, the wave equations that you saw me halfway drive la the first day of class, it was based on Maxwell's equations in vacuum. So there's no medium to speak of uh, whatsoever. And do you remember what the expression for speed of light was? Or C? Yeah, one over square root of mu naught epsilon naught, or you know, approximately three times ten to the eight meters per second. And um, and this expression is problematic to a physicist who believes in principle of relativity. This expression is a bit problematic. Let me try to sketch the picture why. Um, imagine you have a train like this. And we will imagine that the train is moving at some speed. And we'll say it's uh, moving fast enough. I'm just going to call its speed of v. Because uh, I, I don't know. It's a choice between riding down something that's uh, uh, kind of unintuitively large versus leaving it as a symbol. Let me leave it as a symbol train moving at speed of v. And let's say you have a source of light. You have a laser pointer or a lamp, something, here that's uh, emitting light waves. And if this v is 0, then you know how fast the light wave is moving. It's uh, moving at speed c, oh, that way. Or here, it's moving at speed c also. Right? Um, so once the train starts moving at speed v, what does your intuition say about the speed of light here? So as you are looking at the light from out here, how fast should the light be moving? Yeah, your intuition says that, well, the source is moving at speed v. So it's the speed of the source plus the speed of the wave. That's how fast it should move. And here, this is how fast it should move. That's what your intuition tells you. And this is where um, this leads into a bit of a problem. So what you are claiming here is that this is speed of light. Right? C plus V speed of light, which means according to the formula we derived using Maxwell's equation, it must be equal to 1 over square root of mu naught epsilon naught. What are mu naughts and epsilon naughts? They're constants. They are you know, permeability of free space and permittivity of free space. These are constant that, constants that apply to vacuum. And um, here, we, could, we had an out. We could say um, it, this reference frame is special. This is the reference frame where air is at rest. But you cannot say that this is a reference frame where vacuum is at rest. Vacuum is nothingness. Like, it makes no sense for vacuum to be moving. Or, so, so that's the problem that you come across. So I guess here's another way to phrase it. So we say laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frame. Laws of physics, according to Maxwell's equation, de 
determines the speed of light. So if the laws of physics are the same in all reference frames, it must mean that speed of light given by this is the same in all reference frames. That's what it has to mean. If uh, principal relativity is correct, and I guess Maxwell's equations are correct. And for us today, it's, no, um, it's actually not that difficult for us to say Maxwell's equations are correct. The theory of electrodynamics that we have known for a century and a half is not incorrect. <laughs> but for the scientists living in the late 19th century, this was a harder jump because it's, it's a recent discovery for them. Uh, even when Einstein published his paper on special relativity, was it 1905? I forget the exact year. So, um, so he wasn't born that long after. Was he born? He wasn't born that long after Maxwell came up with his Maxwell's equations and predicted electromagnetic wave. So, um, so, so I just because we are going to go into a bit of a history about special relativity. I just want you to acknowledge, the, um, acknowledge that it was difficult for people at the time to accept this fact that we are going to start out with as one of the postulates of special relativity. That because of principle of relativity, laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames, and the laws of electrodynamics are also laws of physics. And laws of electrodynamics are the same in all inertial reference frames. That means one of its consequence, the speed of light, is constant in all inertial reference frames. Um, in physics, we don't, uh, physicists are, um, Let's see. We don't repeat ourselves of a lot. Uh, you won't really find any physical laws that are sort of that duplicate each other. Like uh, if you have something that's stated as law of physics, in some way we are like mathematicians. If you build an axiomatic system of uh, mathematical system, usually you have an axiom because it's absolutely necessary. You don't have two different axioms that do the same thing. Um, so when we, in a, about 30 minutes or so, when we get to postulate of special relativity, um, the second, what we call second postulate of special relativity is the um, one physical law uh, ma that maybe you'll be told that essentially repeats something that you already know. And what it re reflects is the hesitation on the part of the 19th century physicist to completely accept the, the new theory of electrodynamics. And that's uh, the uh, bold assumption that Einstein makes when he comes up with a, a special theory of relativity, uh, or theory of special relativity. So, um, so this picture that we were trying to uh, draw based on our intuition, it's wrong. All of this is just wrong. And we can see that because it's contradictory with other things. And we are going to have to uh, draw up a new, pic man new picture that's going to be consistent with all the laws of physics, uh, as in how they, lock, how they fit into each other.